Hey everyone, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Keisha and today I'm going to be talking about some middle grade releases that are on my radar and this is part two in this series. So as I mentioned before, I am going to be talking about some middle grade releases today. I did a part one to this video and I will go ahead and put a tag up above as well as a link in the description below to the first video. This was just going to be a two-part video, but or a video series, I guess, but I ended up having a lot more books on my list than I originally thought, and so it will be in three parts, and these are just middle grade books that have either come out already this year or are about to come out that I am really excited to get my hands on. I am going to start off today with some series continuations, which I was debating on talking about because I have talked about them quite a bit so far on my channel and I didn't want to do overkill on some of these books. So I am just briefly going to go through some of these and I'm going to start out with those. There are one, two, three, four, five series continuations I want to hit on. And then I'm going to talk about 12 books that have either come out this month in July or are coming out in the fall or winter time. So first up, I wanted to talk about The Okay Witch and The Hungry Shadow, which I already have my hands on. This book came out on July 6th and I did receive an advanced reader copy of this book so I got to read it early and I really enjoyed it. If you have been around on my channel for the past few months you will know that I read The Okay Witch by Emma Steinkellner and I absolutely loved it. It is my favorite graphic novel right now and I also really enjoyed The Okay Witch and The Hungry Shadow. This is a spooky graphic novel or a witchy graphic novel. I absolutely loved it. It kind of reminds me of Halloween Town and the Salem Witch Trials kind of combined, but this story follows Moth and Moth it has always been fascinated with, with witches and witchy things, um, but she has not been a witch herself, but she finds out she is actually a part of a lineage of witches that were persecuted, um, particularly her family in the past had been persecuted and now she gets to live her life out as a witch and there are little adventures and things that come along with that as well as some trouble as you can imagine this book was almost as good as the first book but i still really enjoyed it i gave both books five stars so i'm really excited about this series continuation and i'm also excited about another book that came out on july 6th and i have not got my hands on it yet but it is space boy volume 10. i really like that series it is very simplistic in writing but it is absolutely beautiful with the illustrations and i love the story and basically it follows our main character who is a girl who can kind of pick up on people's, is it her, their scents, their flavors. Um, so everybody has a flavor and she kind of associates people by that, just kind of like, is it synesthesia or something like that that people have where they associate people with things like that. So I think that's really cool, but she ends up finding this boy who does not have a flavor and she tries to find out the mystery behind him. So this is a sci-fi middle grade graphic novel series that I am really enjoying. So I'm excited for the next installation, um, which I haven't got my hands on yet, but it has already come out. The next series continuation that I'm really excited about is Dark Waters by Katherine Arden. She wrote Small Spaces, and this is the third book in the Small Spaces um, series. I'm not sure how many books are gonna be in it, but I absolutely love them. They remind me of Goosebumps, except maybe even better. So this is a middle grade horror or spooky series. And Dark Waters comes out on August 3rd, and I don't really know much about it, except that it follows the same three characters that were in Small Spaces and Dead Voices. I gave both of those books like four or five stars. They are absolutely great, and I cannot wait for Dark Waters to come out. I believe it's going to be um, something to do with the Loch Ness Monster. Then there is also the, I think the final book in the Five Worlds series. It is called The Emerald Gate. This is a series for lack of better things to say about it. It's kind of like a mash mashup between um, Avatar and Amulet, which when I say lack of better things to say, I have all the good things to say. It's just hard to explain for me. So if you like Avatar, The Last Airbender, and then Amulet, the graphic novel series, think of those two kind of put together. I think you will probably really like Five Worlds. So I'm really excited for the next installation to come out, and that should be out on November 16th. The last book that I'm really excited about or series continuation is Amulet. This will be book nine, and I don't really know when it's going to come out. All I know is it's supposed to come out in the fall, which I'm hoping that's still a thing, and this will be the last book in the Amulet series. I've really enjoyed that. It's a really good adventure middle grade series um, that 
is kind of also similar to, well, it's similar to Five Worlds. They're all kind of in tandem with each other where you've got these worlds or these different societies that kind of have a clash and there's a war going on. So I do think this is a really good series. And if you like middle grade series or middle grade graphic novels um, that are on the more adventurous side, definitely check this one out. Okay, so for the remainder of the video, I will be reading some Goodreads synopses so for some of these books. And these are all books that, like I said, have either come out already this month in July. The first three books have come out in July and then the rest of them come out in the fall or in like, no, most of these are the fall. These are all the fall. Most of these are actually August and September because I forgot I'm splitting this into three videos because I have so many books to talk about. So the first book that is coming out on August 6th, I know. July 6th. This came out on July 6th, which I haven't got my hands on it yet. That's why it's on this list because it's still something I'm anticipating. Is called How to Be Brave by Daisy Mae Johnson. This is um, Daisy Mae Johnson's debut novel and it is a contemporary and it says, this is what Goodreads says, Calla North and her mother Elizabeth live a quiet but happy life together. Elizabeth happens to be the world's leading expert on ducks, but unfortunately being an expert on ducks doesn't always pay the bills. No pun intended. When Elizabeth is offered a well-paid research trip to the Amazon, it's an opportunity too good to miss. But while her mother's off exploring, Calla winds up at boarding school. No adventures are likely to find her there, or so she thinks. Then Calla receives the terrible news that her mother's plane has gone missing. Can Calla, her friends, and a motley crew of nuns defeat an evil new headmistress and find Elizabeth before it's too late? That just sounds like a really cute graphic, no not graphic novel. I'm on graphic novels now because that's what I was just talking about. Um, that sounds like a really cute middle grade. I also really like the cover. Both the US and the UK editions of this cover are beautiful. Um, but this sounds like a really interesting story. I think it's funny that it's focused on um, her being an expert on ducks and I wonder how that will play into this mystery of what has happened to her mom and also defeating this headmistress at a boarding school. I love when middle grade books feature boarding schools, but it also says there's a motley crew of nuns. I think that sounds really interesting. So yeah, this just has um, some things here and there throughout the description that really piqued my interest and so that's why I added it to my list. The next book is The Vertigris Pawn by Alicia Wishingrad. I hope I said that right. That is Alyssa Wishingrad. That is a name to say. Um, this book came out on the, well, it comes out on the 13th. I'm recording this on the 11th of July. And this is a fantasy novel. Um, the reason that I kind of gravitated towards this one is I found it not too long after I watched The Queen's Gambit on Netflix because I got really into things that had to do with chess. Now, I do not play chess, nor do I know how to play, nor do I think I would be good at playing or want to learn how to play, but I did like The Queen's Gambit so much that I started looking up things that had to do with chess and I found this book. So not that it, I don't even know if it really has that much to do with chess, there's just a pawn on the cover. So that's kind of what made me gravitate towards it. And I also thought that the illustrations were really pretty. So that's kind of what led me to this book. So Goodreads says, a boy who underestimates his power, a girl with a gift long thought lost, a land ready for revolution. The heir to the land should be strong, fierce, ruthless. At least that's what Bo's father has been telling him his whole life, since Bo is the exact opposite of what the heir should be. With little control of his future, Bo is kept locked away, just another pawn in his father's quest for ultimate power. That is, until Bo meets a girl who shows him the secrets his father has kept hidden. For the first time, Bo begins to question everything he's ever been told and sets off in a search of a rebel who might hold the key to setting things right. Teaming up with the fiery runaway boy, their mission quickly turns into something far greater as sinister forces long lurking in the shadows prepare to make their final move, no matter what the cost. But it just might be Bo who wields the power he seeks, if he can go from pawn to player before the land tears itself apart. That sounds like a really fun adventure story and it sounds like chess is going to have a play in there. Um, no pun intended. Um, but talking about the pawn and I guess he's the pawn in this story and how he will become a player in this game. So that sounds like a good story. I don't know a lot about it. Um, I haven't heard anybody really talk about it much, but it is something that sounds really interesting and I'm excited to read. The next book is The Ghoul Next Door by Cullen Bunn. This is supposed to be a book for fans of Ghosts by Raina Telgemeier, and I really liked that book. 
It's probably one of my favorite graphic novels. So I knew that I wanted to check out The Ghoul Next Door. So this is a horror or spooky, um, I believe it's a graphic novel. Is it a graphic novel? Yeah, it's a graphic novel. So um, it says for fans of Ghost and Hollow, which I have not read, but I know what Hollow is. Um, and let's see, what else does it say? It's a fun, spooky, color, full color middle grade graphic novel about a supernatural adventure and friendships that go beyond the grave. Um, it has a lot of blurbs that I'm going to skip over. 11 year old Gray lives in the legend, legend haunted New England town. That's a weird phrase. Legend haunted New England town of Anders Landing. Okay. And he can't help but feel like a pair of eyes is watching his every move. He discovers odd gruesome bits and pieces from the graveyard that are left for him as gifts like art carved from bones or jewelry made from hopefully not human re remains. Soon Gray is caught up in something bigger than he could ever have imagined. He finds himself drawn into a strange mystery involving a race of reclusive subterranean creatures, ghouls, the eaters of the dead. Turns out his secret admirer is a ghoul named Lavinia, an unlikely friendship forms between them. The only problem is their friendship breaks traditions and the punishment is a fate worse than death. All that I care about is that this is a middle grade graphic novel and it's spooky and it has to do with ghosts. It sounds really cute. That's all you have to tell me about a middle grade or about a book. It's a middle grade graphic novel and it's spooky to even get me to want to pick it up. So that's basically why this is on my list. The next book I actually heard about from Amanda from The Curly Reader. This is The Renegade Reporters by Alyssa Brent Wiseman. I think I forgot to say when The Ghoul Next Door came out, so I'm going to go ahead and bounce back for just a second and say that comes out on August, July, not August, July 13th. And then The Renegade Reporters comes out sometime in August, but I'm not sure when. But I did hear about this from Amanda, and it sounded really good. I have not read anything by this author before, but I think this might be my first one. So... It says, Ash and her friends are reporters. They were ready to leave their school news show, The News at Nine, sponsored by Van Ness Media, when an unfortunate incident involving a dancing teacher, an, irresponsible, an irresponsibly reported story, and a viral video get them kicked off the crew. So Ash, Maya, and Brielle decide to start their own news show, The Underground News, and soon they stumble on a big lead. Van Ness Media, the educational company that provides their school software, has been gathering data from all the kids at school. Their drawings, their journals, even their movements are being recorded and cataloged by Van Ness Media. But why? Ash and her friends are determined to learn the truth and report it. I think this is a really timely book, especially for young kids nowadays who are on their phones and on social media at a much younger age than what I was growing up. And so I think this is going to talk a lot about how, you know, on apps nowadays, when you get an app, it asks if the app is allowed to track things or the different permissions and different things that you mess with, whether on your computer or your phone. And so I think that's going to dive into a really timely um, conversation that needs to be had with young kids. So I'm really hoping to share this with my middle grade book club at my library. I think it would be something good to talk about with them. Now, I let them choose their own book, so I'm not sure if they would pick this right off the bat. I am currently split in the book club where we have half boys and half girls, so now I feel like there's going to be more of a rival between what gets chosen. Um, sometimes when there's a lot of girl main characters, the boys don't want to read those books, but sometimes it works out. So hopefully this will be one that piques their interest and we will be able to read this as a part of our book club. Next is Pennsylvania by Stephanie Watson and Sophia Moore did the illustrations. This book comes out on August 3rd and it says it's like the Phantom Tollbooth meets Harold and the Purple Crayon. Now I have read both of these. I read the Phantom Toll Booth a couple of years ago and it was okay. It wasn't, it really didn't live up to my expectations. I thought it was interesting, but maybe because it was a classic, I didn't really enjoy it as much because of the way that it was written. But I do think the concept was really interesting. And also Harold and the Purple Crayon is one of my favorite things. Like growing up, I thought that was so interesting. And even then growing up, I also watched a show called Chalk Zone on Nickelodeon. I don't know if any of you guys watched that. But this definitely reminds me of a very Chalk Zone-esque story. So it says, Ever since she learned to hold a crayon, Zora Webb has been unstoppable. Zora draws hamsters wearing pajamas and balloons and Lake Superior and pancakes and hundreds of horses. Her drawings fill sketchbooks and cover the walls of the happy home she shares with Frankie and their mother. But when Zora's mom is diagnosed with leukemia, everything changes. After months of illness, she dies and with her, and with her goes Zora's love of creation. 
Desperate to escape the pain, Zora scribbles out her artwork. Her dark, furious scribbles lift off the page and yank Zora and Frankie into Pennsylvania. That's the part that reminds me of Chalk Zone. Because <laughs> he, like, Rudy from Chalk Zone will, like, use this magic chalk and he, like, draws a circle and goes into Chalk Zone. So that's kind of why it reminds me of Chalk Zone. Um, this is a magical world that's home to everything Zora has ever drawn. Same thing with Rudy. This is everything he's ever drawn in Chalk Zone. Um, and one drawing, a scribbled out horse named Viscardi is determined to finish the destruction Zora started. Viscardi kidnaps Frankie, promising to scribble her and all of her Pennsylvania out at sunrise. Zora sets out to rescue her sister, venturing deep into Pennsylvania, a place crawling with memories, dangers, and new friends. If she is to save Frankie, Zora will have to face the darkness that both surrounds her and is inside of her. So I think this sounds really good. It's definitely going to deal with some um, grief and hard times throughout this. So I'm sure it's going to be heavy, but it also sounds really interesting as far as the creative aspect of her being in this world that she has drawn and now she has drawn this destruction in there because of the turmoil going inside of her because of the grief that she's experiencing from losing her mother. So that sounds like a really good book. And the next book that I want to talk to you guys about is Mystery of Magnolia Circle. And this book is supposed to be kind of like Rear Window meets Nancy Drew, which I'm not familiar with Rear Window, but I am familiar with Nancy Drew. So that piques my interest. Maybe this will be like a new, I don't know if this is going to be a series. It doesn't say on Goodreads, but maybe this will be kind of like a new Nancy Drew-ish type thing for kiddos nowadays. So it says, what happens when two best friends take on the world's worst summer? On the first day of vacation, 10-year-old Ivy Croden follows falls down the stairs and breaks her leg. Stuck in a plaster cast, she's certain her summer is doomed. Not even Teddy, her neighbor and best friend, can cheer her up because he's dealing with his own pain, the loss of a beloved dog. But when Ivy witnesses a possible burglary from her living room window, her summer takes a sudden turn from meh to mysterious. Who are the criminals? Might a classmate be involved? And uh-oh, a second mystery is nipping at Ivy's heels. Cue the best friends, the best dog, and the best chance that summer can be saved. That also kind of reminds me of The Woman in the Window. Not that, like, I never finished that book and I haven't watched the movie just because uh, I don't think it's my cup of tea. But she sees, like, something happen through windows. So, it just kind of reminds me of that as well. This sounds like a really good mystery. Another one that I'm really hoping to share with my middle grade book club kiddos. So, I'm excited to get my hands on this one too. Oh, and this one comes out on August 3rd. The next book is One Kid's Trash by Jamie Sumner. This book comes out on August 31st. I do have an advanced reader copy, so hopefully I will get to it before then. But this is from the same author that wrote, um, wrote, that wrote Roll With It and Tune It Out. I am familiar with Roll With It, but I have not read it. This is basically a book about this boy who is kind of like a garbologist or he studies trash or decodes trash, which I think it, it, I find that really interesting to be honest. And he gets bullied in school, but he turns into like the cool kid from the new kid to the cool kid through some of this. I think it's from his garbology. It says, Hugo is not happy about being dragged halfway across the state of Colorado just because his dad had a midlife crisis and decided to become a ski instructor. It'd be different if Hugo weren't so tiny, if girls didn't think he was adorable like a puppy in a purse and guys didn't call him leprechaun and rub his head for luck. But here he is, the tiny new kid on his first day of middle school. When his fellow students discover his remarkable talent for garbology, the science of studying trash to tell you anything you could ever want to know about a person, Hugo becomes a cool kid for the first time in his life. But what happens when it all goes to his head? So that sounds like a really cool book too. Um, that would probably also be a really good book for the book club just because it deals with bullying, which I know is something that a lot of kids face nowadays in school. And I think this would be a cool twist on it considering this kid likes to study garbage. I just think that makes for an interesting story. So this will be a good contemporary one to pick up as well. Next up is Ghost Girl by Ali Mal Malininko. Um, this comes out on August 10th. I thought I had these in order. Maybe I don't. August 10th. Um, and basically the pitch for this book, which I think has been a pitch for a lot of books that have come are coming out recently, is that this is perfect for fans of small spaces and night books, which are two of my favorite spooky middle grades. So obviously I have to pick this one up. The cover looks really good and I'm really excited about this one. So Goodreads says, Z Puckett loves ghost stories. She just never expected to be living one. It all starts with a dark and stormy night. When the sky's clear, everything is different. People are missing, there's a creepy new principal who seems to know everyone's darkest dreams, and Z is seeing frightening things. Large scary dogs that talk, and maybe even a ghost. When she tells her classmates, only her best friend Elijah believes her. 
Worse, mean girl Nellie gives Zee a cruel nickname, Ghost Girl. But whatever the storm washed up isn't going away. Everyone's most selfish wishes start coming true in creepy ways. To fight for what's right, Zee will have to embrace what makes her different and what makes her Ghost Girl. And all three of them, Zee, Elijah, and Nellie, will have to work together if they want to give their ghost story a happy ending. So, I'm really excited about this one. I am, I think, I'm pretty sure I've already pre-ordered this book. It will be something that I hopefully read in the fall around spooky season. It sounds so good. The cover looks amazing. I love how there's like um, an outline in the trees of this like, is that like an elf looking thing or a ghost? He kind of looks like an elf. Looks like he has pointed ears. But regardless, this looks super good and I am really excited to get my hands on it. Along the same lines of spooky, which you guys know is kind of my thing with middle grade, is The Plentiful Darkness by Heather Kastner. This book comes out on August 17th. And it says it's good. It's fantasy and middle grade, or duh, it's middle grade. Fantasy and like magical. And it says it is perfect for fans of doll, doll, I cannot talk. My goodness, I'm so sorry, you guys. Doll Bones and the Graveyard Book. Now, I have not read Doll Bones by Holly Black, but I'm familiar with it and apparently I need to read it. But I have read the Graveyard Book and have multiple copies behind me on my shelf. So I'm really excited that this has been kind of compared with those. And I hope that I enjoy this one just as much. So Goodreads says, let's see. Uh, this also says it's reminiscent of Serafina and the Black Cloak, which I have not read, but um, an orphan girl chases a thieving boy into a magician's land of starless, moonless gloom where other children have gone missing before her. In order to survive on her own, 12-year-old Rooney Debara collects precious moonlight, which she draws from the evening sky with her very rare and most magical lunar mirror. Her drawing uh, magic for moonlight reminds me of the girl who drank the moon, which I'm reading right now. All the while, she tries to avoid the rival roughhouse boys and yet another more terrifying danger, the dreaded magician who's been disappearing children in the, who's been disappearing children in the night. When Trick Aiden, the worst of the roughhouse boys, steals her lunar mirror, Rooney will do whatever it takes to get it back, even if it means leaping into a pool of darkness after it swallows Trick and her mirror, or braving the plentiful darkness, a bewitching world devoid of sky and stars, or begrudgingly teaming up with Trick to confront the magician and unravel the magic that has wrapped Wary Bones that has trapped Wary Bones' children. So, that sounds really good and spooky and magical, which we love all of these things here. So, I'm really excited to read that one as well. Um, I also have another spooky book. Surprise, surprise. This one is called The Hidden Seek. So, let me type that in. The Hidden Seek is another middle grade horror or spooky book that comes out on August 24th. It is also said to be for, span for spans. I cannot talk together. And now I'm saying today instead of today. Like, maybe this is a bad day to film. It's okay. Maybe you guys are getting a laugh out of me. Stumbling over my words. Hopefully. Um, for fans of small spaces and also goosebumps, which is another thing I feel like is probably tagged a lot with spooky books that are in middle grade. Um, I've also heard, I believe it was Gavin from um, How to Train Your Gavin that said this kind of was reminiscent of the like hide and seek or... Was it hide and seek? Something. There's a middle grade book that's been released recently that has a, has a similar title. But this one is The Hidden Seek by Nate Cernasek, maybe. Um, it says, in the spine-chilling middle grade debut, a brother and sister are transported to a cursed world based on the game hide and seek, where they are pursued by a shape-shifting witch. The game never ends, and the only way to get home is to win. So, that sounds super good. I don't have to read the rest of the synopsis to know that that's something that I want to read. I love that it's a game and it's spooky. It's based off of hide and seek and they're in this world that is spooky. There's a shape-shifting witch. I mean, you just can't get much better than that with spooky middle grade. So, I definitely want to read that this spooky season if I can get my hands on it. Next is Dog Star by Megan Shepard. This is a historical fiction that is based on the true story. And I don't know how to say this dog name, dog's name. I don't know if it's Laika or Laika. Um, but she is a space dog. So, this sounds really interesting. Another one that I would likely I want to suggest to my middle grade book club at the library. So it says, Leica is a cold dog, a stray pup fighting for her life on the streets of Moscow. Then one winter night, she is plucked from her alley to become a star flyer, a dog trained to travel into space. Distrustful of people, Leica tries to do everything she can to escape. That is, until she meets Nina. Nina is a cold girl, lonely and full of questions. Her best friend has moved to America in a rush, leaving Nina to face the school bullies all by herself. Plus, her father's work as a scientist in the Soviet space program grows more secretive by the day. When the two meet in her father's laboratory, their growing bond slowly warms the chill 
that has settled in each other's hearts. As the space race between the United States and the Soviet Union grows fierce, Leica and Nina uncover shocking secrets and hard truths that will test their friendship. How will they find the courage to chase their dreams all the way to the stars? So, like I said, this is based on a true story. Um, this author has a Carnegie, she's a Carnegie Medal nominee and a New York Times bestseller. So I'm really excited to read this one. I have a feeling it's gonna be sad because most dog books are sad to some extent and I don't know the story of this dog. So it could be sad, but it sounds really good. I've seen this around a little bit and I've gone back and forth on whether or not it was something that interested me or not, but I think it probably is. So I added it to my list. I only have two more books left and the next one is called What About Will by Ellen Hopkins. This book comes out September 14th. I can't remember if I said when Dogstar comes out. Dogstar comes out on September 14th as well. I'm sorry that I'm so scatterbrained in this video and can't speak today. So, What About Will by Ellen Hopkins is a realistic fiction book. It's kind of, I think, more like older middle grade, young, um, on the younger end of young adult and the older end of middle grade. And it is a novel in verse um, about two brothers. What piqued my interest with this book was that my husband's name is Will and he has a brother. And this is a book about a guy named Will and he has a brother. So, that's why this piqued my interest. 12-year-old Chase Reynolds has always looked up to his brother, mostly because Will, who's five years older, has never looked down on him. It was Will who taught Chase to ride a bike, would watch sports on TV with him, and cheer him on in Little League. But when Will was knocked out cold during a football game, resulting in a brain injury, everything changed. Now, 16 months later, their family is still living under the weight of the incident, what left Will with a facial tick, depression, and an anger he cannot always control, culminating in their parents' divorce. Afraid of further fracturing in his family, Trace begins to cover for Will, who's struggling with addiction to pain medication, becomes some, someone Trace doesn't recognize. But when the brother he loves so much becomes more and more withdrawn and escalates to stealing money and ditching school, Trace realizes some secrets cannot be kept if we ever hope to heal. So, I'm fully expecting this to be a hard-hitting book that is going to make me cry. It sounds really rough. There, there's, there's nothing happy about that synopsis. But it sounds also really, really good. So that's why I added it to my list and I'm really excited to read that one too. Now, the last one we had to end with another spooky book. So this is What Lives in the Woods by Lindsay Curry. Now I do have Lindsay Curry's book, Scritch Scratch, but I haven't read it yet. But I'm really, really, really hoping that in October when I put it on our list for the picks for the Middle Grade Book Club at the library, that this is the book that they pick. So if any of my kiddos or the kiddos' parents are watching this video, I really hope that they pick Scritch Scratch by Lindsay Curry because it sounds really good and spooky. But this is Lindsay Curry's other book, um, or her newest book, that comes out in September, on September 14th also. So this is a horror novel, spooky book, whatever you wanna call it. Um, and Goodreads says, Welcome to the decrepit Wood Woodmore Manor, where something in the woods is always watching. From the author of Scritch Scratch comes a chilling middle grade story about a creepy mansion and sinister creatures in the woods. All Jenny Anderson wants for her summer is to relax, but when Jenny's father, a respected restoration expert in Chicago, surprises the family with a month-long trip to Michigan, everything changes. They aren't staying in a hotel like most families would. No, they're staying in a mansion. A 26-room, century-old building surrounded by dense forest, Woodmore Manor. Locals claim the surrounding woods are inhabited by mutated creatures that escaped a mad scientist over a hundred years ago. And some say campers routinely disappear, never to be seen again. When the creaky floors and shadowy corners of the mansion seem to take on a life of their own, Jenny uncovers the wildest mystery of all. There's more than one legend roaming Saugatuck, Michigan, and they definitely aren't after campers. So that just sounds really good. Okay. Oh, I need that to come out and I need to read Scritch Scratch because I just feel like I'm going to love Lindsay Curry. I have not read anything by her before, but if it's spooky middle grade, like I'm pretty sure I'm going to love it. All right, y'all, that is it for this video. So those are some of my anticipated middle grade releases that either came out in July, August, or are coming out in September. And so I'm really excited to get my hands on a lot of these. Like I said, I have a whole lot of books that I'm really looking forward to. So I have split this into three parts. So hopefully you guys don't get tired of hearing me talk about middle grade books too much, but I love them. I have not read a ton of them lately, but I'm hoping to get back in the swing of them, especially this fall with all these spooky books coming out. So I just wanted to say thank you guys for watching, um, for stopping by and always supporting my channel and talking with me about books. Please feel free to leave me a comment down below and let me know some books that you're excited about, especially middle grade. Or if you know about any middle grade books that I haven't mentioned, you can go ahead and leave those in the comments down below. 
If you've read any of these books, the ones that have just come out, or if you've got advanced reader copies, let me know your thoughts in the comments as well. And if you don't mind, um, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button and the subscribe button and the notification bell to get notifications anytime I post a new video. Thank you guys again for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye friends.